Leviticus chapter number 6 tonight. And uh, I'm going to read several verses here in just a minute. Before I read these verses tonight, I want to make this statement about the book of Leviticus tonight. It's important to get acquainted with any book if you study the Bible. And uh, when you come to the book of Leviticus tonight, this is a wonderful, wonderful book. Uh, this is a book that you don't hear preach out of very often. Right. And when you study the book of Leviticus tonight, the theme of the book tonight uh, is be holy because I am holy. And when you study the book of Leviticus tonight, you'll find the word holy is mentioned, uh, and mentioned in the book of Leviticus 91 times. In this chapter that I'm going to read tonight in chapter 6, it's mentioned 27 times. And in studying the book tonight, you'll study it tonight, chapters 1 through chapter number 7 tonight, you'll find there's a holy offering. Chapter 8 through chapter number 10, and you'll find there's a holy priesthood. And chapter 11 through chapter 17, and you'll find there's a holy nation. And chapter 18 through chapter 27, and you'll find there's a holy land. How about you don't have holiness without an altar? And uh, I want to flip tonight in this chapter here tonight that I'm going to read tonight, and uh, she sent it out of this chapter tonight. Bible said in Leviticus chapter 11, verse number 1, or chapter number 6 it is, and verse number 8, and Leviticus 6, verse number 8, notice this verse. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, I command Aaron and his son, saying, And this is the law of the burnt offering. And it is a burnt offering because of the burning upon the altar all night uh, until the morning. And the fire of the altar shall be burning in it. And the priest shall put his linen garment uh, and his linen uh, breeches uh, shall he put upon his flesh. And take, and notice this statement right here, and take up the ashes which the fire uh, hath consumed and uh, with a burnt offering on the altar. And he shall put them beside the altar. Now again, what did you say? He said the priest is going to put his linen breeches on and uh, that's what he put on when he cleaned the altar off. And he's going to take the ashes off that altar. And they said to the verse, I take it up on the ashes, uh, the ashes uh, which the fire had consumed, I uh, with a burnt offering on uh, 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 the altar. And he shall put them beside the altar. Now look at the next verse. And he shall put off his linen garment and put on uh, his other garment and carry forth the ashes without the camp unto uh, a clean place. He's cleaning the altar off. And he's getting the ashes off the altar and turn them outside the camp of Jerusalem 13. And the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar, and it shall never go out. I want to preach a little bit tonight on this subject, how these verses tonight. Keeping the altar hot. Keeping the altar hot. Bible said here that he take the ashes off in verse 10. And verse number 11, he takes the ashes outside of the camp. Uh, and puts them in a clean place. And uh, what he does in this chapter here tonight, uh, he's keeping the altar clean. And I'll talk to you a little bit about that tonight. Now when you study this tonight, and by the way, I like the book of Job. I understand my boy preached out the book of Job yesterday. And Job chapter number 2, verse number 8, it says this. And he took the parchment and scraped himself with all and set down among the ashes. And uh, that altar Job had made, and he sat down among the ashes. Now hang on to that statement. I'll be back to it in just a minute. But when you sat in the Bible this evening, uh, the Bible has much to say about an altar tonight. If you sit in the Bible, you'll find 370 times in the Word of God uh, it talks about an altar over and over again. And it talks about the altars in the Word of God. And somebody has wisely said how uh, the difference in Abraham and Lot Abraham had an altar, and Lot did not have an altar. And that is so true tonight. And an altar, get this statement, <laughs> an altar is where God meets with men, right. and men meets with God. Yeah. Yeah. And what I just said, I said an altar is where God meets with men, <laughs> and men meets with God. Yeah. I'm going to say it again. Yes, I said an altar tonight is where God hey. meets with men, yeah. and men Anymore. I, I, I don't even mean to share the word preachers. 
Well, give an invitation, but that says you want to be saved, raise your head. I want to say if you want to be saved, walk down the aisle. Yeah. And then somebody take a Bible and say how to be saved by the grace of God. Yeah. And, uh, and if you want to say to that, an altar is a good place to get. Yeah. And thank God that all of us are placed. Yeah. And when you get in touch with God, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't say this before I say that. If you say the Bible, you'll find the Old Testament. Those altars was built out of different materials. Some would be rocks, some would be dirt, some would be mud. And there was different materials those altars was made out of. And uh, I hadn't been saved very long. I tried to get to make them altar down behind my house. Oh, brother. I got saved the 22nd day of October, yeah. 1970. Yeah. I got married the 31st day of, uh, 31st day of December, 1970. And uh, I got my father-in-law's tax right off that year. Had her one day. <laughs> but it happened. You did forgive me for that. I mean, here's what I started to say. I had been saved too long. My wife and I, we got married. And we built a little house on Gwynn Street in a place called Rondon, North Carolina. Down behind that house, after I got saved, I, I made me a trail down behind that house. About three quarters of a mile behind the house. In Wilkes County, I went down through the iron. Kicked all the five gallon cans out of the way, roll all the 65 gallon barrels out of the way, that had a chopping axe that been in them, you'll get that later, and I kicked all the deer boxes out of the way, that had been chopped up, and went on the other side of where that was, and built me an altar at the foot of a great old big poplar tree. Hey, can I tell you something about that? That was a wonderful, wonderful place. Every afternoon when I'd get home from work, sometimes I wouldn't even go in the house. I'd make me a beeline for my altar. And I'll tell you, thank God down for that old tree. It's where I got the assurance of my salvation. Down to that old tree is where God called me to preach. Hey, there's a lot of good things happening. Keep the altar hot this evening. Yeah. And keep the ashes off the altar. And keep it hot for the glory of God. If you study the Bible, you'll find there's at least four different kinds of altars in the Bible by introduction. First of all, there's an altar, what they altar, what we call it's a place of, of surrender. Yeah. It's a place that we kind of surrender on. Yeah. I was said in Romans chapter number one, verse number twelve. I, Romans chapter 12 verse 1 I beseech you now for a brother by the mercies of God yeah. that you present that's that Old Testament word yeah. that you present your body a living yeah. sacrifice yeah. Yeah. Uh, the altar was a place of sacrifice yeah. in the Bible yeah. it was a place of surrender in the Bible and I was saying the Bible the altar of that is a place of sacrifice yeah. it's where you lay everything on the altar yeah. Yeah. you remember that day you come to the altar and you said Lord I'm saved, I'm going to heaven. Yeah. But Lord, I want you to have my mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I want you to have my ears. Amen. I want you to have my tongue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want you to have my fingers. Amen. I want you to have my body. Yeah. I want you to have my legs. Amen. Lord, I surrender all. Amen. I give it all for the Lord of God. Amen. That altar is a place of surrender. That altar yeah. is a place of sacrifice. Yeah. Oh, it's that place you come and lay it all. Also, was the place where sins were confessed. Yeah, that's right. You remember on the day of atonement, Leviticus 16, before the priest could ever go in to offer the blood for right. his sin right. and for the sin of the people, right. his sin had to be confessed. Yeah. And uh, had it not been confessed, he would have been immediately dead. Right. I went, in, went inside the tabernacle of the Holy of Holies. And uh, it's a place uh, where sins confessed. But may I say an altar tonight is a place where Sinners get saved. Amen. I, I like that, don't you? I'm telling you, around that place yesterday, I see three or three or four of them. I get saved by the good grace of God. Listen, can I tell you what happened at our church yesterday? Yesterday morning, I preached on who is that looking in the window. Amen. Right. Mm. That's good. Jeremiah said that death has crawled up into our window. 
And that ram leaped her death is peeping through the window. Yeah. And I preached on who is that looking through the window. Yeah. And I talked about the uncertainty of death. I talked to them about how that you can die today and be gone before you even realize. Right. And uh, about the time I got ready to get started real good, the vista, the doors and the vestry open. My ushers come pushing a full size casket down the aisle. Sure did. Yeah. Soon you talk about getting some attention. Yeah. They come and push that coffin down the aisle. Right. Roll it in front of the communion table. And for about 40 minutes I talked about who is that looking in your window? Yeah. That might be your coffin That's today. Good. That might be the one you're going to get shipped down here in. Yeah. Oh, I'll tell you, God moved in that service center of God's saved. Yeah. And I'll tell you, hey, hey, hey. Oh, no, it's a place where sinners get saved. Yeah. God, God still saves sinners for yeah. that. But I don't get to this text tonight. Notice him a text tonight. The Bible said in verse number 10 that he put his linen breeches on and shall put upon his flesh and shall take the ashes. Last part of verse number 10 shall take the ashes. I take up on the ashes. I went to fire that consumed. Verse number 11, he shall put them off. Uh, his garment and put on the, uh, uh, his garment and carried forth the ashes. I uh, without the town. You know what he done? He got the ashes off the altar. You know what he done? He got the ashes off the altar. Yes, three things now be done. First of all, don't you see the requirements of getting the ashes off the altar? Have the requirements of getting the ashes off the altar. You say, preacher, what do you mean? I mean, get everything off the altar that hinders you from being red hot for God. Amen. Oh, everything that's hindered you from being hot for the Lord. Shout out for the glory of God. Break your ashes off that altar. Drag your ashes off that altar. Hey, can I tell you something about <laughs> Those ashes will dampen the fire. Yeah. Those ashes will hinder the heat. Right. Those ashes are not good for you. Uh, I was brought up yeah, at home. We didn't burn a lot of coal, but we burnt some. <laughs> By the way, the kind of heat that we used to heat our house heated us twice. It heated when you're doing this. <laughs> and it heated when you're doing this. Yes, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. And, uh, and then it heated when you put it in the stove or the fireplace. And, uh, you, and, and I remember there was times when it would snow. And then when I would, my dad would go down to the country store and get a sack of coal. And he'd bring that sack of coal back to the house and Put that coal in there and you talk about a hot heat. Yeah. Yeah. Man, it was hot. But you know that coal will not burn from up. Yeah. You know what you got left? You got what we call sandals. Yeah. It's pieces of things look like rocks. Yeah. And if you didn't keep them pulled out of the stove, that's what would happen. Uh, it would hinder the heat. Some of y'all don't have no idea what I'm talking yes, about. Yes, <laughs> and, uh, and, and by the way, those ashes. You know what an ash box is? How many knows what ash and wood here is? Yes, How many knows what heat of wood is? Yes, How many knows what stone wood is? Yes, <laughs> There's a difference. Yes, Sister Preacher's daughter, get him to tell you the difference. <laughs> There's a difference. And, uh, and I see the daddy a bit of time. He'd get up in the morning and he'd pull that old ash box out. And it'd be full of ashes. Yep. Yeah. And go pour it out on the garden and come back and lay that ash box. Here and he'd take that little thing that had a little square thing about this square and had a long handle on it. He'd reach way up in that ash box and pull all them ashes out and dig the ashes up there in them corners. That you wouldn't even see. He'd go poking around and pulling the ashes out. Yes, because had he not got the ashes out, the stove would not heat up like it ought to. Right. And the children wouldn't be warm like it ought to. Right. Are y'all hearing what I'm preaching yes. tonight? Yes. I tell you, you got grief to get them ashes off that altar and to clean the altar off and clean the ashes off. Yes. So the thing could heat up, thank God. Yes. Hey, we just need to get the ashes off. Now, we're living in a day when the fire has been dampened. Yeah. Yeah. 
God. You know what a damper is? Yeah. We're talking about this. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know what a damper is? Yes, sir. I, I brought up there on the hills. Yeah. Brother Ash, you know what a damper is? Yes, sir. Yeah. Put them dampers, them pipes. Mm -hmm. You know, where we come out of the left stove, you got that elbow, it comes up. Mm -hmm. And uh, before you put the next section on the pipe, then you'd always drill two holes, put a damper in there. And you just that damper, it just is the heat. I preach a lot of people like that. Yeah, they'll just me. As long as they like it, they'll leave the damper open. But when we go to pour the ashes off, they'll begin to smother her down. <laughs> hey, are you hear what I'm saying? Get the ashes off the altar. Today, when I said about this again, I, I said about this again, and I, I thought about what, what is them ashes tonight on your altar? What, what is them ashes tonight that's hindered you? Uh, what is them ashes tonight? And I'll say this tonight ashes are not healthy. Ashes are not healthy to breathe. Ashes tonight, listen to me, ashes tonight hinders the heat. Ashes tonight hinders the soul from doing its potential. Right? Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Y'all see what I'm seeing? Yes, sir. I'll tell you, what's the message on your altar this evening? That's good. Yeah. What is it that this week at God? Oh, tell me. Tell me. Oh, tell me. Hear what I'm saying yes, tonight? And by the way, don't be content with ashes. Yeah, right? Amen. You know, there's some folk can allow the Lord to get so close to them. And that's it. They're going to stop it. Not going no farther. They're going to stop it. Right. I was getting, I had to get to physical today. This lady was drawing my blood. And uh, she said something about what do you do? And I said, I'm a preacher. And I said, uh, where do you go to church? She said, I don't go to church. And I said, why? She said, that's as far as we're going with that. I said, well, Really, it's not the matter whether you go to church. It's the matter whether you were born again. If you die right now, you're going to hell with hell. You're saved. You said we're going as far as without as we go. I said, well, what if you die right now? I'm pretty dumb with my part doing that and her sitting out with a nigga. I didn't think I'd ever get to it and sat down again, so... I said, uh, the big question is, what if you die right now? She said, if I die right now, I'm going to the graveyard. I said, where's your soul and spirit going? She said, there ain't no such a thing. I said, well, why did you just smile at me? Sweet spirit. What? Are y'all hearing me preach? I'm telling you, get the eyes off. A lot of people are content with them ashes. Yeah. Oh, they'll get a little bit off. They'll get a little bit off. They'll get a little bit off. But I'll take God in this day. I want you to get the ashes off. Take some of this shot out yeah. for the glory of God. Yeah. The requirements to get those ashes off that altar. And, uh, and again, ashes will make you sick. And I will tell you tonight, hey, we just need to come together and come with God and say, dear God, I'm coming tonight. And whatever ashes is in my altar, whatever ashes is on my altar, I'm going to come for the glory of God. Hey, God, get the ashes Yes, sir, preacher. Can I say this tonight? You know, what I'm finding in this day, I'm finding these days a lot of people too busy to get the ashes off. Yeah. Oh man, we got to do this, we got to do that, we got big, big, little league, basketball, golf, swimming, fishing. I mean, we don't have time, man. Did you know it takes time to live holy? It takes time to walk with God. You can't jump out of the bed, man, every morning, put your britches on, take off to work, and not read your Bible, and never pray, and be spiritual. And you can't come home at night and have your britches, jump in bed, and not read your Bible. You can't do that, and not be spiritual. It don't work that way. It takes time to be holy. It takes time to get holy. Sometimes when we come to church, I just wonder. I don't know about the minutes. I don't know nothing about the whiskey pans. 
but I know a whole lot about babies. Yeah. Yes, sir. I are one. <laughs> and, uh, you know what I found out across this country? I, I, I found out there's so many folk tonight, they are so time conscious. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, now, God, if you're going to do it, you've got to do it right now. Right. I mean, bless God, the house of prayer coming on in a few that's minutes. Exactly right. And the water is coming on. Boy, that's spiritual. <laughs> I'll give you day 31. I mean, I'm going to do 830, but Lord, I'll just let you know how serious I am. I'll go to 831. Hey, Lord, so this is the test time to get your exes on. I heard a story the other day where this man was in service. Preachers are preaching the house down, having time like you are here tonight. And right in the middle of the preaching service, but Thomas, that man got up. Started out the door. Preacher hollered at him and said, Hey! Say, where are you going? He said, Man, I gotta go get a haircut. <laughs> Preacher said, Why don't you get one before you come? Right. He said, I didn't need one. <laughs> <laughs> but two time conscious, are you yeah. uh, I, I was laying in the bed a few yeah. weeks ago. You don't know watch around. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. laying in the bed a few weeks ago. Yeah. Brother Mark had been, you went to that meeting, my brother sent off meeting. Yeah. And uh, at 1245 in the morning, my telephone rang. I jumped straight up. <laughs> Man, I, I, I know what them phone calls are in the middle of the night when I pass your church, and you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I jumped up and I grabbed that phone. Now, guess what I said? Hello? <laughs> and on the other end it was Rebecca, my daughter. She said, Daddy. I said, What, baby? She said, Listen to this. And evidently she was in the church. At 15 minutes to one, three or four hundred people was tying the house down hey, in the hey, house of God. Hey, hey,
And the Lord said for you to come. These dates right here, now give me October 1 through 5 or September 3 through 7. And I said, boy, that's the strangest thing. I can't come that day. And you know, it will take an act of Congress to change a date in a Baptist church. <laughs> the mountain where I come from, they have their spring revival the first week of April. They have their fall revival the first week of October. God don't speak any other time. That's good. That's in all churches. That's it. I mean, that's it. Show up anytime. Yeah. I've been giving all my denial of the Bible. Oh, the requirement of the answer trust the older. Don't be so kind, Conscious. The requirement of getting that pride, getting ashes off the altar. You know, it takes a lot of pride. You have to swallow the pride. Yeah. And say, Lord, the flesh is in the way now. Yeah, yeah. My people, which are called by my name, will humble yeah. yeah. Pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked yeah. yeah. Then will I hear from heaven forgive their sins and cure the land. I, I will say the requirement of getting that ashes off the altar. You may have to swallow your pride. Uh, the requirement of getting the ashes off the altar. You know, some folk don't get the ashes off the altar because they're deceived. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't got no ashes in my altar. Right. But when God comes to the church, they call them a dog's nose. Right. Right. They never get excited. They never say amen. Yeah. They never give out a gospel tract. Don't go to church half time. But they, I ain't got no ashes in my altar. Right. 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 Yeah, right. not deceived. Yeah. not deceived. Oh, the requirement to get the ashes off the altar tonight. And that is so important tonight. Right. Some folks don't get the ashes off the altar because of unbelief. Yeah. I mean, God's not going to do it. He did it back in Spurgeon's day. He did it back in Moody's day. He did it back in Sunday's day. He did it back in Jack Howells' day. How he did it back in Curtis Hudson's day. But preacher, you've got to understand what's going on today. I do understand what's going on. There's a God in heaven this evening. He gets a much God in heaven today. He gets his head to the Bible today. Requirement to get them ashes off that altar. Yeah, man. Trust God. Believe God. Trust God. You know, some of them won't get the ashes off the altar simply because they just really don't care. Amen. But I do care. And I'll tell you this tonight. I want everything God's got for me. Amen. I want everything God's got. I want every, every, everything God's got. I want it tonight. All the requirement of getting the ashes off the altar tonight. Second thing I want to say, not only the requirements of getting the ashes off the altar. But then I want to say, Amen. what's the reason? I'm just going to preach on they'll be all right. That's right. What's yeah. the reason? Amen. What's the reason for getting the ashes off the altar? We see the requirement, what's the reason? Amen. I've already said part of it, but I'll say it again. That sacrifice that's on that altar will not be as hot as it ought to be. You just raise your hands while I go, let me talk to you. You that's had a wood stove or has a wood stove or ever had a wood, wood stove or ever think about getting a wood stove, listen to me. Does ashes hinder the fire? Does ashes hinder the heat? Uh, it cuts it out and that's exactly what it does because when the ice box fills up, it can't get no air. It can't get no suction. It, it, it can't draw. You ever seen a chimney cut and draw? Yep. Huh? And uh, chimney gets stopped up. And uh, that little crystal gets in there sometimes. Yeah. And uh, it can't get air. It can't breathe. And, uh, and here what I'm getting ready to say tonight. The reason to get the ashes off the altar is to keep that sacrifice on the altar hot. I will tell you again. Hallelujah. I will stay hot for God. I will stay stirred up for God. And I will stay on fire for the Lord. I don't want to cool off. Back down. Shut up. I have a fear 
One of my fears is this right here because I have seen it over and over and over again. When preachers get older, you say you're not old. I'm the oldest I've ever been. <laughs> Down through the years, Pastor, I watch preachers. I know physical problems come, and I know we may not jump as high as we one time jump. We might not run as fast as we one time run. But that zeal and that excitement and that joy and that thrill of being saved. My daddy went out here at 86 years old shouting the victory. Eat up with cancer, laying in the bed. Laid out my side of had my hand almost on him the second he went to hell. When I hear shouting the victory, had that old black Mexico filled Bible laying right beside him. The same one that he took and led me to Christ 41 years ago. Amen. He was out here with a shout to his soul and a smile to his Yes, sir. Right before he died, I was changed right before he went home. I was at the hospital laying in the on a cot beside of him. I woke up one morning. Four o'clock in the morning. Daddy was talking. And uh, I said, Dad, what do you need? And I rose up and I looked at him. And, Son, he was plugged into another world. <laughs> <laughs> he was calling on God. He was praying. He was praying for the churches down through the years. And he pastored. He was praying for his young ones. Praying for his preacher boys. I just laid back down. The Holy Ghost said, he's all right. Going back to sleep. <laughs> I went back to sleep. About 6 o'clock, I woke up again. When I woke up again, he's still talking. Yeah. And when I rose up and looked at him that time, I don't even think he knew I was in the room. Boy, he wasn't saying, God, you've been so good to me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. thank you for saving me. Yeah. I thank you for all of it. He was shouting yeah. out yeah. of the show yeah. to yeah. hospital. I want to go out here that way. Hey, there's a difference when I see across this country preachers cooling off, calming down, shutting up, even some of them compromising. Oh, no, brother, hear me. Hey, listen to that. Hold on. Keep it hot. 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 The reason you keep them off is to keep the sacrifice hot. Amen. Amen. You one more thing I've done. You see the requirement to get the ashes off. You see the reason to get the ashes off. Then I want to say in closing tonight, you see the reward of getting the ashes off. The reward of getting the ashes off. And by the way, can I just say this right quick? I don't never want my young ones to see me not pray. Amen. Amen. I don't never my young ones to see me not on fire for God. Amen. They never have seen me that way. And I sure don't want to start after all these years. I want to keep them ices off that altar and tuck out to a clean place and keep that sacrifice hot for the glory of God. The reward of keeping the sacrifice hot. You remember in the text that I read tonight? Job said in Job chapter number 2, Job chapter number 2. You remember the verse I read there? Job chapter number 2. It said that uh, he took him a pot tree and scraped himself with all. Talking about them boys. The boy may have preached on this yesterday. He took him and that pot tree, scraped those balls. And scraped those balls and sat down among the ashes. You know why that's why? Right? You know why he sat down there? Because in chapter number 1, verse 4 and 5, Job said, Who can tell? Maybe my children have sinned against God. And Job was offering sacrifices for his children. In Job chapter number 1, Who can tell? Maybe my sons or daughters have done wrong. Maybe my sons or daughters have sinned. Job was offering them sacrifices on that burnt sacrifice on that altar. And them ashes was falling down. A few days later, Job's lost everything he's got. Yeah. 
stripped, don't have anything. Outside of the city, by the way, outside the ice pile where he was at, was a dump where they throw trash, yeah. where the dogs would come and eat from. Yeah. And now you see Joe sitting in an ice pile, scraping those walls. You say, preacher, why did he choose to sit down in the ice pile? Let me tell you why. Because back in chapter 1, God met with him there. Amen. Yeah. It was there that he offered the sacrifices for his children. Yeah. It was there where the ashes fell down from the sacrifice. Job remembered back there, that's where God met with him. Amen. Job goes back outside the city one more time and sits down in the ash pile. Here's what he says. Who can tell? No. <coughs> he may come by again. If he, if he comes by again, I will be sitting in the same spot. The reward of getting the ashes off the altar. I tell you what the reward is. He may just come by one more time. He may come and shut up under your shadow one more time. Hallelujah. I thought about this today. First Kings chapter 18. Elijah's on Mount Carmel. Those Baal worshippers on Mount Carmel. Elijah, Elijah being the gentleman he is, he allows the Baal worshippers to build their altar first. Right. And they did. Yep. And they called on their God, which was Baal from morning to dark. Yes. They were sincere, by the way. Right. They even cut themselves. Right. And uh, if you'll study that, you'll find, I believe you'll find that old Elijah probably made a little fun of Made fun of Right. right. Crap a little He may be on a trip somewhere. Right. <laughs> After they got done going through their little routine, their little religious activities, Elijah said, get out of the way. Yeah. And the Bible said in 1 Kings chapter number 18 and verse number 30 that the man of God, Elijah, came and repaired the altar of God. That's right. I wonder what would happen in old time being this church. If everybody come around tonight and pour the ashes off the altar. Amen. And repair the altar. I'm not talking about them little ashes everybody sees. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about when Daddy would. Amen. Talk about them ashes in them corners. <coughs> and then get down that old stove and look back in there. Yes, sir. You'll find a way back down them corners. There's some ashes. Amen. That's why Daddy would take that little thing, reach back there and pull them ashes out. Because it, it wasn't really doing his full 